In the YouTube algorithm, the people are represented by two opposing groups, the reactionary content creators and the leftists who debunk them. These are their stories. Welcome back to Curve Thought, everybody. I'm your host, your boy, Sean. And today we're going to be talking about the myth, the legend, the slayer of dragons, defeater of chaos, and supposedly destroyer of SJWs, Mr. Clean Your Room is back! Let us see if he's going to be bringing us any kind of wisdom here today. Now, before we continue, I should stipulate that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Jordan Peterson. In fact, I disagree, let's say, 85% of the time with what he says. Despite that, it's very important to keep stock of what he's saying and the perspectives he's coming from because ultimately whether we like it or not others are going to adopt these perspectives over the years there have been many conversations that have taken place many shifts in psychology that have occurred primarily due to this particular man though i might be saying now that i generally disagree with what jordan peterson has to say personally i really enjoy listening to him because it's it's an adventure man it's an adventure that means it's always entertaining to hear it's especially when he's incredibly wrong. So today we're going to be looking through a couple of clips from a recent podcast that he did with Brett Weinstein of the Dark Horse podcast. Now, this particular podcast, I'm not going to go through the entire like 90 minutes of it. Is it 90 minutes or two hours? I don't know. But there have been a couple of choice selections that have been sent to me. So we're going to cover them all one by one and see where we agree, disagree with Jordan and Brett in these particular instances. Also note that the big thing, the reason why we do this is not just to be able to dunk on Jordan, which admittedly is quite fun. However, however, I think it is important that we assess where people are coming from, assess exactly what's going down, and then if and when they're wrong, be able to point out why they're wrong, where they need to correct themselves. So without any further ado, let us hear from Jordan Peterson and Brett Weinstein. Comrades! I suspect you know, if you did the statistics properly, I suspect that that medicine, independent of public health, kills more people than it saves. I suspect if you if you factor in phenomena like the development of superbugs in hospitals, for example, that overall the net consequence of hospitals is negative. Now that's just a guess, and but it's and and it could easily be wrong, but it it also could not be wrong, and that is a good example or. A, that's where my thinking about what we don't know has taken me. So he's asking us to be skeptical of medicine. I think it would have been a very different story if he'd said be skeptical of hospitals in some capacity. Because there are some dangers in hospitals that don't exist in other places. But medicine? Writ large? Writ large? Jordan? You sure, cuz? You sure? Yeah, cabra? Yeah. Yeah. You just simply cannot come away saying that you believe medicine overall on balance has been bad for humanity. Like I said, it would have been a different story. He'd still be wrong, but it'd be different if he said hospitals. But medicine writ large, he tries to give this caveat where he says, no, outside of the context of public health, which is equally ridiculous. So I imagine that he's giving that caveat to be able to remove when challenged. Because Jordan does this a lot. When challenged, He's able to retreat behind exactly what he said, not what's inferred by what he said. If we take those rote dictionary definitions of every single word, Jordan is almost always able to weasel out of a situation that paints him as being as ridiculous as he sounds here. Now, that's just a guess, and, but it's, and, and it could easily be wrong. But it, it also could not be wrong. And that is a good example. or a good, That's where my thinking about what we don't know has taken me with regards to the critique of what we do. Okay, here's something else we're going to have to address before going forward, because I didn't address this the first time around. You do not, you do not, you simply cannot make a positive claim, say, after making that positive claim, that I have no evidence, I have no reason to believe this positive claim, but I want to, so it could also be true. You can't say, I'm probably wrong, I might be wrong because I have no basis for my opinion, and then turn around and say, but you also don't have a basis to show that my opinion is wrong either. 
don't know what I'm listening to right now. Unless somebody else is willing to give me a more comprehensive view of medicine that, you know, only in that definition covers hospital malpractice, covers infections in hospitals, covers superbugs, whatever. Give me a narrow enough definition of medicine that I can make this make sense because otherwise this literally makes no sense to me. You might as well try to argue here that, well, if we look at all the car crashes that happen that are fatal throughout the year and we examine the wreckage, we find that almost all the people in those cars have their seatbelt on and their airbag is popped. Hmm. So most of the car crashes that result in death results in the person wearing their seatbelt and their airbag coming out. A lot of the car crashes people have routinely in life that don't kill them, don't pop the airbag. And sometimes the people aren't even wearing their seatbelts. Therefore, seatbelts and airbags are bad for driving and keep you unsafe on the road. I, I don't know where you stand on this issue, but I have been um, tracking the lab leak hypothesis for COVID and it is very distressing to me that as much as it's an unsettled question, the evidence for the lab leak gets stronger over time. Whew. So I think we've exhausted the wellspring of knowledge that is Brett Weinstein and Jordan Peterson's medical takes. So let's proceed. Let's hear what they have to say about communities on the internet. 